This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. I'm Roby Brock. It is Monday, therefore, I am here with John Brummett. And as always, it is good to have him with us. Thank you for being here. I look forward to it every Monday. Every Monday. One of my favorite days of the week. It one is. of my seven favorite because, days. Because, one of your seven favorite, yeah. because you're here. Right. Right. No, of course, I that's what I meant. Oh, well, that's super. Yeah. Um, are you in a good mood because the session is like officially going to like, they're yeah. going to disperse today? Or are you in a good mood because, I don't know, you had a good weekend or something? Do I seem in a good mood? You, you do seem in a good mood. It may be because of the legislature. We're going to be talking about the legislature in sort of an analytical past tense way. <laughs> uh, so that's good. That's Which good. one of these, how many sessions have you covered? Do you I began covering legislative sessions in, in a special session in January of 1980 when Bill Clinton was okay. governor. Many since then. That's, you know, that's, that's 37 years. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You're almost a dean. You're almost Holy dean smoke. status. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think well, 40 is when you become dean. Yeah, okay. Well, that's my ambition. Make well, it three more years. Let's, let's talk about <laughs> what is <laughs> highlights and lowlights of this legislative session. What would you point to as some things this uh, legislature did that was good? Some things the legislature did that were good. Well, I would begin with, and uh, forgive me, but I, I, I seem to have become something of an Asa Hutchinson guy. But I think the management of the session generally was pretty good from the governor's office. Uh, uh, tax cuts, which were limited, responsibly sized, targeted to low incomes, a budget that's conservative but keeps state government functioning. Do you know that we've got a general improvement fund bill that's going to come out of this session, or is, has come out of this session, that does not have any of this legislative money that we've been dealing with for all these many years, which I've long considered an outrage, and which in fact was uh, a process infested with a few indictments of late. <laughs> not <laughs> happening. I, I wondered if they could, for all the talk of discontinuing it, I, wanted, I always thought the pressure for legislators to take a little of that surplus and go home with it might prevail. No, not going to have that. Uh, so uh, it was, it, uh, I, and, and I'm not mad at Hutchinson about the gun thing, even though I hate that we got that bill. But right, he, you're not he, mad at him about it? No, because uh, if he had vetoed it, it would have been overwritten. If he had asked the legislature to take it back, it would have, they, they would have made it possibly worse. The only option that he had was to sign it and then say, please pass some things to fix what I just signed. And with the help of the Southeastern Athletic Conference <laughs> uh, and the Razorbacks <laughs> and, the, and the hope of recruiting and safety at, Razor, at Don Rose Razorback Stadium, the worst parts of it were carved out. So that ended okay. I th I've referred to, uh, to the governor as the adult supervision at the, at the state capitol, and I think uh, that that's what he has been. I think this particular legislative assembly could have been a lot worse with a more doctrinaire, right-wing, less responsible type of governorship. My favorite bill, though, single bill. I want to hear about it, yeah. On the day, the last day to file bills when everybody's filing these, these, these tons of just everything, just a ridiculous number of bills. Not as many this year, but they always do on the last day. Senator Jeremy Hutchinson put in <laughs> his bill to preserve, to, to preserve all of our right to be left alone. Mm. Well, you know what that bill was about. It was, uh, well, it was, for, for me, it was about uh, uh, it was about appealing to both the left and right because everybody could say, "I wish these, I wish the government <laughs> would leave me alone." You t what was he really after? Well, I think it was the spam emails and the you know the telemarketing phone calls was really I think what that's was the also essence of all well that's that, a so. big part of it. I yeah. mean, generally, I mean, to be left alone, uh, he wasn't specific <laughs> about that. So, it, but 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 just would include that. But but a general leaving alone. I think I'm, I'm actually a true conservative because as I get <laughs> older, I'm, I'm for being left alone. I had a column last week saying, we don't, I, I endorse this idea of making it harder to amend the Constitution. We had enough amendments. Uh, and I, I, said, I proposed that we set up a screening process for bills that you had to get a supermajority vote of, of a committee right. to determine whether it was germane or, or worthy to be considered. We just, we, we don't need all the laws these guys are, are making. Are you standing on your front porch waving your fist at those kids and telling them to get off your lawn? They, dare, you not, that they dare not come on my lawn. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I'm not. And it's not grumpiness necessarily. You just said I was in a good mood. I know. You need to get one way or the alone. other. You, 
<laughs> don't we all, in a way, want to be left alone? Well, I don't, I'm a social butterfly, you know. I Are like you? To be, okay. I like to see and be seen. All right. Uh, the phone rings too much. Low of, your, of this legislative session, pick one one thing that you just lament one? the most. Just, if, are you afraid I'm going to ramble again? <laughs> I'm just pick. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we got unlimited time. Well, I just know yeah, I could let not, you go all day. But not and, to hold the viewer's exactly. attention. I mean, uh, well, one low light. Now wait a minute. That's uh, I can't stop with one. However, it will not surprise you. That I know if, you're going to take if more I liberty. Must, so. If I must pick one. I've got to go with uh, some of the legislative package, singularly some of the legislative package of my favorite state senator, Jason Rickle. Yeah. Uh, the the bill <laughs> to rename the Clinton Airport was pointless, petty, grandstanding, silly. His initiative to have us have a con uh, call for a constitutional convention so that we could lead the way in in, in eliminating the rights of uh, same-sex marriage was futile pointless, petty, petulant, and grandstanding, in my opinion. So I would, I would put that up there, but I've got some others that I could mention. But those, uh, you force me to say one thing, I'm, I, I talk about, it. I, I, I feel obliged to mention Senator Ray. Okay. I'll give you one extra nugget there. You go one more on your, you wish that you hadn't had to write about this, read about this, or deal with this in this legislative session. The Senate Judiciary Committee wants once was uh, the best committee in the legislature because it was made up of lawyers who understood constitutionality, understood uh, uh, legalese, B.B. Harriman, Everett, Wayne Dowd, people like that. This Senate Judiciary, uh, one effect of modern term limits in, the, in, the, in this uh, reddening of the state is very few lawyers are elected to the legislature anymore. The two lawyers on that committee, Chairman Jeremy Hutchison and Will Bond, excellent. One of one party and one of the other. The rest of them weren't very effective and the gun bill was a bit of a mess, and the gun issue was a bit of a mess because it didn't get cleaned up in that committee in a way that a good committee, viewpoint aside, a technically adept committee could make a bill better and say, we need to amend it here, we need to fix this. That uh, committee you're referring to in its heyday would have killed that bill in that committee. It would have been buried and never seen the light of and day. And they would have told you beforehand. It's yeah. dead on arrival when it comes to <laughs> right. our committee. Also. The, the Hutchinson and Ingram put in a resolution after the North Carolina loss <laughs> calling, for, <laughs> calling for NCAA ref, er, officials to get better training yeah. so they could more fairly and, and administer the ball games. And eye exam should have been amended got, into that which resolution. Which got a national write-up, <laughs> critical national write-up in Sports Illustrated Online, yeah. the silly legislators in Arkansas. That wasn't very good. Sorry, I, see, I, I ended up... I knew you'd you knew squeeze a few in you there. Know I know you okay. very well. All, All right. right, we'll take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about state executions right after this. Okay. All right, we're back with more right after this. Arkansas Electric Cooperative Corporation provides electric energy across two-thirds of Arkansas. This is an exciting time in our energy history, with incredible progress being made in renewable energy and storage technologies. As our energy portfolio continues to diversify, we'll maintain an all-the-above strategy to provide reliable and affordable electricity. Ever since the first light bulbs were placed in our members' homes, the electric cooperatives have been the solutions provider for our members, and we want to continue that well into the future. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me. And welcome back to Talk Business and Politics Daily. I'm joined by John Brummett. All right, let's turn our attention to uh, what is coming up in the middle of this month where the state of Arkansas will re, um, restart executions for the first time in about 12 years. Eight executions in the course of 10 days. Maybe give everybody just a little bit of background first. I think most people that watch us are up to speed, but just so that that context is there, why are we executing eight people in 10 days. There were new uh, avenues of, of death penalty and post-conviction uh, 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 relief, uh, new avenues of, of, of debate and appeal in post-conviction petitions that opened up and, and so we had to go through a process of letting all the relevant death row inmates uh, pursue those appeals and get them settled. 
but perhaps more to the point, uh, European uh, drug makers and, and uh, were discontinuing the uh, making the, making available uh, the, the 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 lethal uh, uh, chemicals, the lethal medicine that we uh, put not medicine, what is it? Lethal drugs right. that that we use uh, uh, for the uh, uh, lethal injection for the so. It, during Mike Beebe's entire governorship, we never got to the point where everything was settled for any inmate to the point that the law required him to set a date. That has now been done. So we have all these that over this 12 years, I thought it was 10 or 11, but you just, I'm sure you're right, it's 12, that, that they all sort of backed up. And now that, that all, those, uh, all those appeals are settled, and then it's time to do these eight. At the time, Governor Hutchinson said, we're gonna do them when these 10 days because he was, he professed to be worried about whether the drug would be available after the end of yeah. April. One of the three in the cocktail right. expires at the end of April. Mm -hmm. So, so, but I, I've since heard that that's, that, that could be replaced or replenished in some other way. But anyway, the, the reason, the professed reason was we need to get them done while we have the available uh, drug. So, the, yeah, that's how it comes to be, mm -hmm. that this governor has set eight executions within 10 days from like the 17th of April to the whatever 10 27th mm -hmm. uh, and and that has attracted international criticism because it apparently is a world land speed record for a state killing people nobody I mean Texas has done them two or three at a time Arkansas Huckabee had did a couple at a three. time mm -hmm. uh, but we not with but this is so almost this has assembly line connotations in over 10 days we're gonna, the state is gonna roll in eight death row inmates and kill them. And it has created an entirely different kind of debate. It's not about, and I wrote about it yesterday, it's not about the death penalty. I mean, we can argue about that all we want. It's about, should we do this in such a, in such a, a, a rapid manner that doesn't respect life enough to, to, to take serious, I mean, when you, when you roll one in and then roll in another a few hours later, are we, are we disrespecting life and are we not taking seriously this somber state authority to take life? And so that's, that's the debate and, and New York Times has criticized uh, the, the state and that's where we are. So do you think, I, I, I believe Arkansas is still a very pro death penalty state. We're actually gonna do some polling this week on the subject and uh, so we'll either confirm or alter that uh, conclusion of mine. But do you think that this focus, this attention that you're talking about, do you think that will change people's attitudes about the death penalty in Arkansas? Or is it just going to change their, per perhaps change their thoughts about the circumstances of which we're doing this? I'm not sure, and I look forward to your polling, and I hope you get all those questions framed in a way that'll, <laughs> that'll produce uh, results as I know you and uh, as I know you will. My instinct is, and from anecdotal information from what I hear after having written about it, is that people, is that yes, Arkansas is a pro-death penalty state, but there's something about the, uh, the appearances of this, this eagerness to do a bunch of them in a hurry that, uh, that, does, th that seems to bother people. Now, so I would think that your poll would show continued overwhelming support for the death penalty, but that that would peel back a little if you specifically support this schedule of eight executions in 10 days. That's what my instinct tells me you will find, but I have underestimated the uh, the mood of the people of Arkansas uh, quite a bit lately, uh, uh, <laughs> beginning about 2010. Yeah, okay. I mean I've I've seen it, <laughs> but in each election I sort of fall back into my more distant past and I make assumptions that maybe it, maybe are not so. But I look forward to you doing that poll. And I hope you'll give me a heads up as soon as you get the numbers. I will. Right. Last question and on a serious topic, because I think this gets neglected in here, regardless of your position on the death penalty and the fact that there's so much attention placed on the killers and the executions. Do you think that we are losing the victims and the victims' families' stories in all of this discussion and debate? In this particular case? In these eight cases, yeah. By having eight that in addition to not taking your, your question. There has not been a ton of reporting on who they harmed and what happened with those services. No, and there won't be were. because as I wrote <coughs> yesterday, and it's the point I was trying to make earlier, but I maybe not make, th th this schedule sort of numbs us to what we're doing. When I said that, I said it from the standpoint of all of us considering that it, within our political and government power, we are 
part of a system that takes life tonight. Okay, yeah, but, but, but then to turn around and do another one a few hours later, another one a few hours later, I think that diminishes uh, the, 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 the solemn obligation that we have. And you make an even as good a point or better that among the things getting lost are the, the, the reasons we have the death penalty, basically, mm -hmm. right. to, 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 to extract some sort of closure for the victims and the stories of the crimes. And it's just, and, and that's interesting. I mean, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because it opened, it's a whole different uh, angle to the same point. Eight in 10 days, a state doing the death penalty in a rat-a-tat, wham-bam, assembly line way. That's the issue here. And I, re I regret that Arkansas is doing it, and I don't think it does our general national and international image any good. I, I really don't. May bring some closure to those families of those victims. We'll, we'll see. Well, that that well, will be an interesting, I think that that is a storyline that needs to not be neglected in all of this. Yeah, and by the way, the, the death penalty, I guess I'm against it. I spoke once to the uh, Arkansas Coalition of Death Penalty at their annual banquet, but when I got up to speak, I said, I've got to tell you something. When I'm driving through Hillcrest and I hear the uh, news bulletin on the radio that Timothy McVeigh got the death penalty, I was glad. Yeah. So even if you, th even if you intellectually and morally come to a conclusion that you're against it, the instinct can sometimes be powerful. It's, it's a very, very tough issue. All right. He's John Brummett with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. You can catch him three times a week in the paper, fourth time online, and daily if you want to watch this video every day, right? I think people should watch it over and over, <laughs> over and over. Being here. Okay, thank you. That is all for today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.